Good day, and thank you for your interest in Stratford and the State of the Town Address. As we come to what is hopefully a late phase of the COVID-19 pandemic, I am once again delivering this address to you via video. The previous two years contending with the COVID-19 pandemic have been challenging, testing the strength of our community. As with the previous year, the people of Stratford ensured that we would persevere against these challenges that came at us with a blinding speed and lasted longer than we could have ever anticipated. Critical collaborations between town residents, town government, local organization, and businesses were at the very heart of our arsenal combating COVID-19. Thankfully, we are in a place now where transmission rates and hospitalizations are dramatically decreased. Masking mandates have been lifted in town and the region and the state, and we are hopeful for a summer, fall, and winter that returns us to comparative normalcy. In consideration of these developments, this is where I would like to begin my report to you. It seems like an eternity since we mobilized a response to the first reported cases of COVID-19 back in March of 2020. Our health department took the lead with Andrea Bassevain and Greta Bernil at the helm, led by Director Larry Ciccarelli, the public safety departments of dispatch, EMS, fire, and police engaged for more than two solid years during this crisis. 2021 began with a long-awaited rollout of vaccines to immunize against COVID-19. Director Larry Ciccarelli distributed 20,000 test kits, 25,000 masks, and 100 thermometers. The Stratford Health Department ran weekly COVID-19 vaccination clinics with the support of staff of the Medical Reserve Corps. Collectively, they administered 15,542 COVID-19 vaccines. The Health Department also partnered with Hartford HealthCare, Yale New Haven Health and Griffith Health brought pop-up vaccination clinics to Stratford neighborhoods with lower vaccination rates. Pop-up clinics were held at Stratford Baptist Church, Franklin Elementary School, Sterling House Community Center, South End Community Center, the Stratford YMCA, Stratford Housing Authority, and Baldwin Center. The department was also awarded a vaccine equity partnership funding, which was used to create a collaborative of community organizations who reached out through education and logistical support to residents experiencing vaccine hesitancy. The Stratford Health Department partnered with Stratford EMS and Stratford Visiting Nurse Association to create a robust homebound vaccination program and performed 150 first, second, and booster doses in the home. This effort continues today. And no operation can be successful without financial support. I would like to thank the members of the Town Council who supported our budgets and policies and who have been critical partners in delivering five consecutive town budgets that have provided a reduction in the mill rate. Together, we successfully ended the cycle of tax increases that previously burdened Stratford taxpayers. And we continue to hold the line on taxes without a mill rate increase while funding necessary services. Our grand list has rebounded from last year's COVID stunted growth to 3.87%, which translates roughly into $197 million. While there were some very real challenges this year, we continue to deal with the human and economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. We worked to close a budget hole of $4.7 million created when the state cut aid to all communities receiving funds from the Distressed Municipalities Program. The governor's budget for this year does not include them either. Also, with inflation skyrocketing, we had to absorb a projected 7.5% half percent inflation rate. In addition to our town council, I am thankful to work with professional, experienced, and proactive staff whose expertise is greatly valued by me and critical to the functionality of town operations. My chief administrative officer, Chris Timniak, chief of staff, Michael Downs, community and economic development director, Mary Dean, and public safety director, Larry Ciccarelli, are key to how we function and how we represent ourselves to the taxpayers and to our neighbors. New initiatives and growth are happening in Stratford. In the last year, we have conducted nearly 30 ribbon cutting celebrations for the opening of new businesses, and our community continues to thrive. The Stratford Army Engine Plan has received a great deal of attention, with time and money being expended to redevelop the property and adding the property to the tax rolls. On February 23rd, the Center School Committee met and recommended developer Spirit Kalanagi to the Town Council for the redevelopment of the former Center School property. The Town Council will vote on an approved developer for the property at the July Council meeting. Proposals are on the economic development page of the Town of Stratford's website. After the theater fire, I put together a subcommittee and a task force that looked at the possible development options for the property based off the community's feedback following the fire. They did a wonderful job of presenting different options of size and types of uses along with multiple business plans. Whatever development takes place on that site, it may require some capital investment on the part of the town, in addition to the state bonding grant. We continue to be grateful that the property is being enjoyed by literally thousands of residents and people from neighboring towns with the Shakespeare Market. We appreciate Tom Dillon and his family who volunteered countless hours to organize and run this amazing market. 
Significant funding has been awarded to Complete Streets Project, which encompasses a portion of Main Street from Barnum Avenue through the center of town, south to Harvey Place. The town has submitted a 60% design to DOT, which is committed to funding $2 million for the implementation. Despite the continuing economic challenges of COVID-19 and the state economy, we manage significant business and personal property growth, which are a credit to our community, our welcoming and supportive business climate, and the increased desirability of living here in Stratford. The full interchange of Exit 33 has been completed, with the northbound ramp having opened last November and the southbound ramp having opened in May. This project has been decades in the making, but this exchange provides much better highway access to many Stratford businesses and commuters. At the time of this message, the City of Bridgeport Administration has indicated that they will sell the Sikorsky Memorial Airport to the Connecticut Airport Authority, a significant departure from their previous position of wanting to enter into a lease agreement with the CAA for the management of the airport. I joined with Senator Kevin Kelly in calling for Stratford to be permitted the opportunity to purchase the airport. Back in 1937, Bridgeport purchased this then private airport located entirely within the territorial boundaries of Stratford. The airport borders the Stuart McKinney Wildlife Refuge, the Lordship Community, and Short Beach Park. A state takeover of the airport by the CAA would eliminate decades of agreements Stratford constructed with Bridgeport, promoting the interest of the area's neighborhoods and natural resources. The CAA has made it clear that they intend to bring passenger service to the airport should they take it over. As a state entity, the CAA could expand the runways by using eminent domain to seize the additional land they would need for such an expansion. Stratford should finally be given the ability to direct the future of this airport, and it should be run by those who live here and answer to the public where the airport is. It should not be run by an outside entity and certainly not a state bureaucracy 70 miles away from the airport. If Bridgeport no longer wishes to own Sikorsky Memorial Airport, Stratford must be given the opportunity to acquire the airport and develop it in the manner that is consistent with the values and characters of our community. We deserve the opportunity to control our destiny, and I am ready to work with our partners in Bridgeport to make this historic investment that will benefit both of our communities. The Stratford Health Department, under the direction of Andrea Boisevain, is one of only three accredited health departments in the state of Connecticut and they continue to apply their high standards of performance for the benefit of Stratford residents and businesses. Beyond the critical role the department has played during the COVID-19 pandemic, there are many other important focuses they have day to day. The cleanup of the remaining Raymark waste in town has continued. In conjunction with the Environmental Protection Agency, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Connecticut Department of Public Health, and Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, the Stratford Health Department has hosted regular Raymark community advisory group meetings and neighborhood-specific meetings virtually to provide community members opportunities to learn about ongoing and upcoming projects from the subject matter experts, as well as ask questions and express concerns. The department continues to maintain a Raymark property database and a public-facing Raymark website. Back-to-school physicals and catch-up on childhood immunizations were offered to students. The asthma program successfully adapted to a telehealth-type model. Flu vaccinations were provided to 426 people, including two worksite clinics at Advanced Radiology and Kitchen Brains. Progress continued with the prevention work on opioid overdoses, securing additional funding to support a broader partnership approach. Community and senior services merged to strengthen our capacity to support Stratford residents across the lifespan. Tammy Trojanowski was promoted to the director of the Consolidated Department. Specifically, this realignment makes our services more accessible and easier to navigate for residents so there is no wrong door. This also improves collaboration among the town's human services professionals that will benefit residents. Community services transitioned individual youth counseling, family therapy, and court diversion through the Juvenile Review Board from in-person to telehealth for the continuous uninterrupted services during the pandemic. We accept insurance for counseling services. Child Health Development Institute of Connecticut also credentialed community services as a trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy certified treatment site. Counselors completed in-depth training in the trauma utilizing this evidence-based treatment model. This allows us to handle trauma cases without needing to refer out to other providers. We are better equipped to help our Stratford residents during intense times of needs. Community Services partnered with Economic Development to spearhead Stratford Strong, our long-term recovery task force. Through collaboration, we have leveraged community development block grant funds to meet the needs of residents and support small businesses. Social services provided by Community Services, Senior Services, and the South End Community Center included accepting Connecticut Energy Assistance Program applications, renter's rebate applications, 
and IRS VITA tax prep assistance. These were completed over the telephone to provide safe, contactless services for residents. The South End Community Center Food Pantry, operated in cooperation with the South End Community Center Council, scaled up to meet increased demand. They also expanded services to include delivery to older patrons. Prior to the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, 300 to 400 seniors visited the Baldwin Center daily. They participated in a number of daily recreational activities such as exercise, painting, and lectures. They socialized over coffee, played card games, or a game of pool. Transportation services provided curb-to-curb -curb rides from home to medical appointments, grocery stores, and to the Baldwin Center. During the pandemic, we provided vital transportation, food delivery, well check calls, assistance making COVID-19 vaccination appointments, and made countless referrals to a variety of local, regional, and state organizations. Conservation Superintendent Kelly Garrigan, who works within the Public Works Department, wears many hats, including that of our tree warden. Under her guidance, the town was awarded a Clean Water Act grant of 115,000 to create a watershed-based plan for Bruce Brook. The plan will culminate in a path forward to improve the water quality in the Bruce Brook watershed and that of Long Island Sound. Creation of this plan is set to begin this summer. We also received a Connecticut Urban Forest Council grant of $37,000 to plant 100 trees in districts three and four. Planning has begun for this effort and it will include community outreach meetings in these neighborhoods. The town was awarded an Environmental Action Award from Yukon Environmental Corps in recognition and appreciation of our work promoting Brownfields redevelopment. The students of the Yukon Brownfields Corps assisted the town with federal Brownfield grant applications and previously updated our inventory of Brownfield field properties throughout the town. We also received a National Fish and Wildlife Foundation grant with our partners at Audubon, Connecticut to employ 12 high school students from both Stratford and Pinal High Schools for the Great Meadows Marsh Restoration Project. The students are gaining valuable conservation employment experience right here in Stratford as they assisted in replanting efforts for the past spring. The Great Meadows Salt Marsh is the largest unditched salt marsh in Connecticut, home to many state and federally listed species. It is also designated as an important bird area by the National Audubon Society. Lastly, we received additional 1.5 million DECD grant to continue the environmental cleanup of the former contract plating facility on Longbrook Avenue adjacent to the Raymark ball field. The achievements in the area of conservation happen under Renee Serra, Director of Public Works, who has overseen 8.5 miles of road paving, 30,650 square feet of sidewalk repair in town, and 17,800 square feet of sidewalk at three schools last year. Under her supervision, we held a record-breaking household hazardous waste collection event in October, with over 600 residents participating, ensuring safe and environmentally responsible disposal of common household chemicals, oils, and other related products. Public Works replaced inefficient boilers with high-efficiency gas condensing boilers at Flood Middle School, Second Hill Lane, and Eli Whitney Elementary Schools. At Pinnell High School, we completed a large-scale flooring remediation project. At Burzai Complex, we started phase one of installing new controls for the building management system that will help the HVAC system run more efficiently. The Baldwin Senior Center received a full building renovation, which included new paint, flooring, and LED lighting. Other completed projects include the Bunnell Athletic Field, Stratford Academy Roof Replacement, Juliet Low Pavilion and Ground Improvements, Columbus Street Tot Lot, Bunnell Tennis Courts Renovation, Short Beach Tennis and Basketball Court Replacements, Nichols School Playground Replacement, Replacement of two six-wheel dump trucks, and purchase of two sanitation trucks waiting for delivery. We've completed the landscape overhauls at Baldwin Center and the train station. Under the direction of Superintendent Amy Norris, Stratford Recreation has been able to offer programs and summer camps for thousands of town residents in spite of the COVID restrictions. We have also continued to employ many local high school and college students. For the past two summers, we have hosted more than 600 children each day at various summer camps across town and employed close to 150 students. Our town clerk's office continues to provide the residents of Stratford an outstanding service in an efficient and welcoming way. Under the direction of Susan Pollock, the town clerk's office is committed to the ongoing process of preserving the town's valuable and historic records. They do so by digitizing older land volumes and then merging them into our online database. A new offering this past year is applying for certified birth, death, and marriage certificates online. Online access accomplishes increasing the public's ability to research and view these records online and to print them without having to leave their home or office. 
an added benefit of this project is that these historic records will always be accessible, even in the case of a natural disaster. In addition to land record documents, other permanent historic records are also microfilmed each year and stored in an off-site facility for additional backup. Susan and her staff did an extraordinary job managing the election season, including the influx of absentee ballots cast. Police Chief Joe McNeil and his staff recognize that our diverse neighborhoods have different needs, and we continue to work to address those needs. Again, in fiscal year 23, we will look to continue meeting the challenges of 21st century policing. We remain focused on the concept of community policing, understanding that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Our community outreach programs through our Police Activities League and other avenues continue to grow. The primary mission continues to be expansion of programs and connecting with at-risk youth. The PAL design will be to maintain contact through all levels of school. We work with the Board of Education to tailor PAL programs to students who will benefit the most from mentoring. PAL has impacted more than 1,000 students year after year. The Stratford Police Department's Police Engagement Program educates citizens on how to react to police contact and continues to receive accolades as a national model. The Police Department was awarded a federal grant of $43,000 to further their groundbreaking work in de-escalation. The town of Stratford continues a downward trend in crime rates. As of today, there has been a 15% reduction in the crime rate compared to last year. The Stratford Police have upgraded body cameras and in-car cameras to the next generation technology and developed training to meet and exceed requirements of the new police accountability bill. The police department continues to partner with the Stratford Board of Education to engage our youth and ensure that our students excel. Dispatch, under the direction of J.P. Straczynski, has successfully deployed new technologies such as text to 911, AED link, and the new recording device variant. Training opportunities have been increased for staff to include ride-alongs, customer service training, active shooter events, web EOC, and created new revenue opportunities through training and testing other departments' dispatchers. EMS Executive Director Mike Louise reports that Stratford EMS is an accredited NAEMT training center, an approved American Heart Association training center, and approved Safe Sitter training site. Stratford EMS is a heart-safe workplace and has received the Heart-Safe Community EMS Association Lighthouse Award. EMS was able to achieve the Mission Lifeline Gold Plus recognition this year from the American Heart Association for their response times and work with heart attacks. This is in large part driven by the full-time paramedics that were added to the staff. They continue to work very closely with the health department to deliver the COVID vaccine to as many residents as possible. The Stratford Fire Department had many achievements this year. Stratford Fire took advantage of several opportunities to research and apply for grants that would help with both training and purchasing of essential equipment that keeps us in the forefront of the fire service. Among those are an Assistant to Firefighters grant of $28,600 used for purchasing equipment and training of below-grade rescues. Another was a FEMA grant for a total of $64,000 used to purchase 260 specialty smoke alarms for the hearing impaired. The department recently finished negotiations for a new rescue pumper that is scheduled for a 2023 delivery. The fire marshal's office is partnered with the American Red Cross to provide smoke alarms for every resident in need. This program has blossomed and the American Red Cross recognized Stratford Fire as the most successful department related to smoke alarm installs. Chief Lampart retired in June after 34 years of service to the town of Stratford. Newly appointed Chief Jermaine Atkinson has taken the reins as of July 1st. I'm confident Chief Atkinson will continue to serve Stratford well. Under Human Resources Director Ron Eng, the Human Resources Department also had a busy year. The HR Department assisted impacted town employees and their families on COVID-19 guidelines to ensure the containment of the virus at home and for the employee to return to work in a safe and healthy manner. The HR Department oversaw the training of all town employees and town management positions regarding implicit bias and diversity and sexual harassment. The department also incorporated a new town ID badge system, which will work in conjunction with the new town door lock system to assist with providing additional safety measures at town locations. The HR Department also assisted in the successful renewal of both the police and dispatcher union's collective bargaining agreements. The goals of the HR Department are to be available for both current and former town employees. Under the management of Chris Timniak, CAO, and Don Savo, our finance director, we continue to incorporate significant efforts that make Stratford run more efficiently. Through their efforts, Brown & Brown is the health insurance broker for both the town and the Board of Education. This affords us increased buying power and lower costs. Gallagher Insurance became our property and liability broker 
and has secured equal insurance coverage at reduced premiums. We have closed out old bonds, returning millions of dollars to the town, and we are taking advantage of short-term debt options like bond anticipation notes and five-year bond notes lowering our long-term debt. During the past year, we have made critical long-term adjustments to funding our pension and bonded debt that results in a savings of $9.1 million over the bond terms. Refinancing has created $3 million in budgetary relief for fiscal year 2022, and $2.7 million for each fiscal year 23 and 24, and $560,000 in fiscal year 25. We are realizing significant savings through expanding combined services with the Board of Education, and we continue to make further strides utilizing technology aimed at more efficient processes with our recent Munis upgrade for all of our departments. As we continue to offer more from Forest to Shore, I'd like to share some amazing developments. Stratford was named a Purple Heart Town in August of 2021 in recognition of all our town does to support veterans and Purple Heart decorated recipients. After a two-year hiatus due to COVID concerns, we were finally able to see the return of the Stratford Veterans Breakfast honoring all residents who served in the armed forces of the United States. This event joins many others that have returned and are thriving, such as our Memorial Day Parade, Fourth of July fireworks, Blues on the Beach concert at Short Beach, our summer concert series at Paradise Green, Latin Music Festival, Great Pumpkin Festival, and our annual holiday lighting ceremonies. I'm honored and proud to represent Stratford as mayor. It means everything to me to have the support of hardworking Stratford families as we work together to make our community even better. I'm always mindful that running this town is a collaborative art, made possible by the contributions of residents, businesses, nonprofits, and community support organizations. We have come so far together, especially during historically difficult and unusual times. And I know the future holds more great things for our terrific town. Thank you for taking the time to watch today.